Now, today I've got a massive and terrible confession to make to you all. I've not always supported Bolton Wanderers Football Club. Today you're going to find out who I supported before I supported Bolton Wanderers. Oh, no, no, turn off the camera, Theo. I can't, I just can't do this. Now, I tried to make this confession to my priest earlier. I walked into the church, into the confessional box and said, Father, I've got something horrible to confess. And as soon as he heard the name of the team, he shook his head. He said, say a thousand Hail Marys and he stormed off. He said he'll never forgive me. So let's see how you lot react to my confession. So back in the day, I went to Moorside County Junior School in Lancaster, North Lancashire. Now, every boy was football mad and they supported either Manchester United or Liverpool, with the exception of Paul Metcalf, who supported Wolverhampton Wanderers. But he always had to be different. Anyway, everyone else supported Man U or Liverpool. The local team was Lancaster City. They were non-league. Morecambe was just down the road, but they were non-league at the time. So it was Man United or Liverpool. And these were the days before or replica strips and no one had a you know a flash top on but you knew who everyone supported and occasionally in the playground it would kick off these seven eight nine ten eleven year old boys would be scrapping the cry would go up fight 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 and you'd knock 11 bells out of each other until the dinner ladies came along anyway it's october 1975 i'm seven years old and i'm thinking to myself it's time to make me mind up who do i support is it man united or is it liverpool anyway i walk back home I proudly go into our bungalow and I'm like, Mum, Dad, I've got something to tell you. Michael from across the road supports Man United. My best mate Graham supports Man United. So from now on, I'm going to support Manchester United Football Club. And I'm like, Dad, can we go to Old Trafford to watch a game? Anyway, there was silence in the bungalow. My mum walked out the room. My dad just went quiet. He wasn't angry. He wasn't excited. And all he said after about a minute was, don't plan anything tomorrow we're going somewhere. Anyway, the next day is Saturday, October the 18th, 1975. And about one o'clock in the afternoon in Lancaster, me and me dad, we pile into the Austin Allegro, which by the way, was an awful car. Anyway, we pile into the Allegro, we go down the M6, we go down the M61. And after about 45 minutes, we arrive in Bolton. And we find a place to park near the train station on the bridge there. And we get out of the car, and we start walking down the Manchester Road, the famous Manny Road from the songs. And all around me, there's boys, girls, men and women. They're wearing rosettes and scarves and they're all on the way to watch Bolton Wanderers. We walk down the road and there's men coming out of the pubs and coming out of the chippies. And I remember the first thing we did, we went to the happy shop. Now, these days, every football club has got a merchandise store, hasn't it? Well, back in those days, 40 odd years ago, Bolton's souvenir store was about the size of a kiosk and all it sold was programmes and badges. There was no replica kits, uh, to my knowledge. Anyway, we go over to the turnstiles. My dad gets an adult ticket and, and a kid's ticket and I'm really excited by the old style turnstiles. I wanted to push it round. I'm seven years old. Anyway, I get lifted over the turnstile. You know, the turnstile operator is making a few quid on the side and we, we arrive about probably about an hour before the game starts and we, we find a crush barrier and my dad lifts me up and he's bought a program for, for, for you know probably for five pence or something and I'm avidly reading this program and I find the page with the league two uh with the league two standings and I'd never seen you know a table a league table before and I'm asking my dad how it works and he's like oh yeah a win is two points a draw is one point goals for goals against and the geek in me, I love kind of mathematics and all that. So I was really excited even before the uh, the whistle went. Anyway, I'll tell you, my memories from that day, bizarrely, are the smell of cigarette smoke. It was an autumn day, probably a bit cold. And these days, when I smell cigarette smoke, I think of that day in Bolton. I remember the men coming on, pints in their hands, pies and chips and what have you. The language, I loved the foul language and the chants and the songs. I mean, back home and in the playground, you weren't allowed to swear, but on the terraces of Burnham Park, you could swear like a trooper. And that day, I remember some of the players. Neil Watmore was the Bolton striker. He became a bit of a hero. Super Sam was a centre-half. These days, he's known as Sam Allardyce. He was playing that day. So was Peter Reid, a really skillful midfielder, who, by the way, I met last weekend at Anfield. What a brilliant guy. 
So that day changed my life. And once in, never out. From that day forward, I was a Bolton Wanderers fan. So I was a Man United fan for about 24 hours. So you're probably asking, Grandad Barry, my dad, how come he was a Bolton fan? Well, this goes back to about 1949, and his cousin Peter went on a school trip to Burnham Park from Mossley, and he, he called up his cousin, you know, my dad, and said, look, next week we've got to go along to a Bolton Wanderers game. Now, this was probably two bus rides from Mossley to Oldham, Oldham to Bolton, and age nine years old, actually probably in 1950, my dad went to his first Bolton game, and he, he stood on the, the Bolton paddock with his elder cousin, and he just absolutely loved Bolton Wanderers. And from the age of 12 or 13, he would get those two buses by himself and stand on the embankment end. And he was such a big fan that in the 1950s, he was voted young supporter of the year. And one of his, one of his treasured mementos is a letter from Bolton legend, the Lion of Vienna, Nat Lofthaus. And he's still got that letter to this day. My dad can remember watching the FA Cup final of 1953 that Bolton lost to Blackpool 4-3. He can remember crying that day. And five years later, 1958, Bolton beat Man United in the FA Cup final. And my dad was overjoyed. So Bolton Wanderers has been in the family for, oh, what is that, 73 years. My dad went to the Bolton-Cambridge game last weekend. He's been watching Bolton for 73 years, man and boy. So when my son Theo was born in 2001, he didn't really have a choice. And we were living in Bowdoin, which is near Altrincham in Cheshire. And in his playground at Bowdoin Church School, all the boys and girls supported either Man United or Man City, but not Theo. From the age of four, well, he supported Bolton. Went to his first game about four years old. I can't remember which game it was. But Theo used to turn up to school wearing his replica top. And, you know, he got a few taunts. And certainly when we moved to London, he got a lot of taunts from Chelsea and Arsenal fans. And the funny thing was, one day I got offered two season tickets. So we're living in London now, 2010. Theo's nine years old. We got offered two season tickets to Arsenal. And I thought a bit guilty. I felt a bit guilty. So I went to my son and said, Theo, do you want to support a London team? I said, if, if you want, I'll, I'll always support Bolton Wanderers. But if you want to go to Arsenal week in, week out, I've got these two season tickets. You know, it's going to cost us a couple of grand, but whatever, son, if you want that, we'll do it. And my son looked at me and just shook his head, thought I was mad. He said, Dad, I'm Bolton Wanderers. I'll always be Bolton Wanderers. So that is the story of how I supported Manchester United for about 24 hours, but how my, my dad and my son and me have always been Bolton Wanderers. Once in, never out.